Okay, very good morning. Hope everyone is well. Thursday, 19th of September. Uh, thank you very much for anyone who joined us live for the FOMC uh, meeting and announcement last night. Um, you can access the full recording of that session uh, on our YouTube channel, so do check that out if you, if you did miss it. Uh, otherwise, it's, I guess, a case of the morning after the night before and digestion of the Federal Reserve and and certainly when we left the office, uh, some of the guys here, Charlie in particular, uh, had two great trades, one on the euro uh, and one on gold, uh, which I'm sure Sam can talk a little bit about from how to have approached that in a, in a kind of execution or a technical setup sense. But certainly that gold move was, was pretty prevalent at the time and all of this was kind of underlying the idea of what was classified, if you like, in a simple sense as a, as a hawkish cut. So cutting the uh, federal funds rates by 25 basis points as expected to the new range of 175 to 2 um, but then sounding relatively upbeat some things obviously still to be monitored in the economy they're looking at there was no express mention of the, the repo rate issue the tightening of liquidity we've seen in the money markets there was no dramatic dovish shift in the dot plot matrix for their future trajectory of rates and so ultimately you had uh, what really is, uh, I guess, a bit of a three-phased move, if anything, because you know equities dipped, gold dipped, uh, yield spiked, so hence the reason why you had this kind of, uh, not, almost, not really hawkish, but if anything, uh, disappointment for the doves, if you like, and, and as a net consequence, a hawkish result. So equities and bond prices lower, uh, dollar firmer uh, and gold lower. Uh, gold as well exacerbated by a lot of the technical levels that were getting breached on both trend lines and support levels as well. Um, then we recovered, I mean, going into the closing bell, I mean, just as we left the office, Sam uh, actually left at about, I guess it would have been about 10 to 8, something like that, quarter to 8, uh, and he said, um, he whispered, buy the dip, <laughs> because it's the sort of guy he is, he's a big believer and has been, I think he's, he's dwelling too much on, when was it, 2018? When he was buying the dip at every opportunity and, and definitely served him well. Uh, but he was right again. <laughs> and, you know, the, it went down and uh, a really powerful rally we actually had. You can see in the center charts here, these are the US indices and raging back into the close. <coughs> Overnight in Asia, though, kind of drifted south. We've just had a little run down again. So I'm still quite interested to see how today pans out on further reflection, particularly in the North American crossover when the US come back in. Because if you actually look at the charts, um, equity index futures are lower. Um, that goes for Europe as well as the US. Gold is down 13 bucks, still sitting around a 1500 mark, although it's recovered some of the sell-off from yesterday, it's still down. Uh, T notes are down three and a half ticks. So it's still mildly reflecting this idea or notion that uh, perhaps the market was a little overextended in how dovishly uh, positioned it was in its expectations for yesterday's uh, event. Um, let's just have a quick roundup then uh, and a few charts to have a look at in respect to the Federal Reserve. Uh, so for one, the Federal Reserve makers, yeah, as I said, they lowered the interest rate. Powell said that moderate policy moves should be sufficient to sustain the US expansion. Fed officials maintain that very key pledge uh, that to quote, act as appropriate to sustain the expansion. So that remained, obviously there's optionality, although we're talking about here potentially a, a hawkish interpretation. The fact is that they've said as they continue to monitor incoming events, whether that's data or external headwinds, then they would act as appropriate to sustain uh, the expansion. So that optionality that they could cut further if they needed to. <coughs> um, Interest rate on excess reserves cut after the repo rate crunch. I mean, yeah, okay, so that's more a reflection of uh, that kind of sits in step with the fact that they lowered the Fed funds rate. There wasn't really any explicit nature of a constant um, uh, stability kind of uh, inaction of a more regular fixed repo rate activity, and that may have dissipate, disappointed some. This was the dot plot though, and I think this is what was maybe mildly surprising. Uh, as you remember, the dot plot used to look almost identical apart from the 2019 uh, part of this green line. So 
2020, 21, 22, longer run, it's remained relatively unchanged. What it used to look like was almost like a, uh, a drop and then up. And now, as we know, we've had two rate cuts, so the, the 2019 end's got to come down. But the rest remains rel relatively unaltered. So comparative to what we were looking at yesterday with the ING forecast of what would have been a dovish one, which would have been a significant move to the downside of and, and more shallow trajectory of rates over time, that definitely didn't happen. And so, again, adds to that notion of, uh, of a more hawkish outcome. What's now the, the market pricing going forward? Well, we've got two more interest rate decisions for the Fed for the rest of the year. The next one happens on the 30th of October, the day before the risk of no-deal Brexit, the day before Mario Draghi leaves. So perfect timing all seems to be coming at once at the end of October. And at the moment, the markets are priced as of the as of right now 57.2 percent the interest rates are not cut again and they remain where they are by october although it's a pretty close call if we go to the end of the year what are markets expecting well a pretty tight call again between rates either remaining where they are or another 25 basis point cut so markets kind of right on the edge of or not whether we have one more to go <coughs> so that's the kind of fed situation not going to dwell on that too much uh, as I said, though, what I am interested in is when the U.S. come in later or on. You know, now they've slept on it. What do they think about the next course of action going forward? Do we get a rerun of what we had last night? <coughs> Another bit of pressure into the equities and that frustrates Trump. Uh, and he starts tweeting, as he did s several minutes before he delivered the press conference yesterday for Jerome Powell. Moving on, uh, I'm going to go in chronological order, um, starting with the BOJ. Uh, believe it or not, they actually did have their interest rate decision overnight. Uh, I know it's hard to, to kind of keep on top of these things, and the Bank of Japan haven't made any uh, immediate move. They've not followed the likes of the ECB or the Fed, although it looks more likely or not that they will do. It's just a matter of timing, and perhaps that will come next month. The BOJ said it needed to pay closer attention to the possibility of losing momentum toward its 2% inflation target as overseas economies continue to decelerate. So they're definitely setting the scene for potential policy easing to come in future. And remember, we have had the likes of senior ranking policy officials there of late talking uh, over the last couple of weeks about taking rates further into negative territory. So uh, most economists, as the second bullet would suggest, think that the next move will be more stimulus, just a matter of the fact that it didn't happen right now. Um, we have had a little bit of yen strength overnight. Uh, perhaps the fact that they didn't act right now uh, has fueled a little bit of that move. Uh, but also, again, with some of the generalized risk off as well, perhaps in the marketplace, uh, just helping some of that overnight currency movement. Uh, overnight, you might have seen the Australian dollar has come under some significant pressure. Aussie dollar trading lower. If you're looking at the Aussie future, it's already down at its S2 this morning, finding a bit of support there from overnight uh, on the initial reaction. And that's because expectations are growing that the RBA are going to have to take more policy easing action after what we had was Australian jobless rate unexpectedly climbed in August uh, as the labour force swelled to a fresh record, essentially. Uh, so additional labour market slack that sets the scene for further easing from the RBA to come in the near term. Uh, and as such, repricing of those expectations has led to some selling uh, pressure into the Aussie currency. Uh, this, of course, coming after, uh, although the dollar index is down on the session about one tenth, it's still having gapped up from uh, the movement we had last night. Uh, so kind of divergence of fundamentals in that sense between the Aussie and the dollar the US dollar. Moving elsewhere, our trade talks, what's going on? Well, actually, just so you're aware, because we're likely to get some, some comments on Twitter and from various news agencies and so on, today and tomorrow, um, there is meetings happening in Washington. Uh, these are, I think it's with the Trade Secretary, uh, perhaps the Treasury Secretary is involved as well on the US side, uh, and some of the finance ministry officials from China heading to the States to lay the groundwork then for high level talks, which are set to happen in October. So this is usually what happens. They send the envoys in, contingency of 20, 30 people come over from China to the US. They talk about some of the top level stuff. So at the moment, the topics for discussions over two negotiating sessions are said to be upon 
China's commitment to purchase agricultural goods, so things like soybeans in particular will be in focus given how, how pressure, pressurized that particular sector has been to the detriment uh, of Trump recently, which we know is very important for him politically to manage those types of farmland areas. Um, there is lesser focus on the more contentious issues, which is strengthening China's intellectual property protections and the rules around that. This is much more going to be about, OK, let's have some sort of commitment from China that they'll continue to buy these, uh, these soft agricultural goods ahead of their more top level detailed talks that will be hosted in October. So just something to be aware of in case we see any headlines hit the tape. Another thing I thought I'd mention, this actually came, I believe, after market yesterday. Uh, perhaps could be something when uh, cash markets open in the States later on the NYSE at 2.30. Uh, Microsoft have unveiled a $40 billion stock buyback. And they've also boosted their dividend as well. I think their dividend increase uh, was by $0.05 cents to 51, <coughs> $0.51 cents a share. So uh, I think they've conducted one of these similar size scale buybacks before, but certainly given they are the biggest company in the world, largest company listed in the S&P and the Nasdaq, I definitely would be interested to see how they perform pre-market ahead of the open later. Coming back then to the session ahead, um, you will be well aware that there's been a three-day hearing happening in the Supreme Court in the UK. Uh, in regards to a number of different factors, there's been three legal cases. One brought about a, a kind of antiquated Scottish law by 70 MPs. There's been a Junior Miller uh, repeal that's being heard. Uh, and one other, these all in regards to contesting the government's ability to have in action prorogation of parliament is the main kind of theme. Uh, this has been going on for a couple of days. Uh, the main takeaway here that I want to stress to you, you guys is that the three-day Supreme Court hearing ends today. Uh, with justices retiring to consider their verdict, the PM could be forced, if he loses, to recall parliament, giving opponents of no-deal Brexit more room to try to basically disrupt his plan to leave the EU with or without a deal on October 31st. The main way to interpret this would be if the PM loses, and i.e. he has found he's used uh, uh, inappropriately his powers to prorogue parliament unnecessarily, not for the right reasons, and that leads then to a reopening of parliament if his hand is forced, that would be an immediate pound positive. And I would expect the pound, at least in the intraday short term, to spike fairly aggressively. Now, this doesn't mean that Brexit is solved and it's a holding of a medium-term position. It just means then that the threat of this no deal would diminish as Parliament comes back into work and has more time to try and uh, disrupt the process of the PM's plans to kind of leave, do or die in that situation. So I don't at this point have any set time on when that verdict will be heard. But when it is heard, again, if it goes against the PM, I'd see that as a pound positive if you do hear of any rumours circulate or, in fact, the news headline breaks while we are here. This does lead us on then into today's session. Um, earlier this morning at 9.30, we will get UK retail sales, so do keep an eye out for that. But um, as per the case, really, with CPI, not looking for massive movement. And we do have the Bank of England, of course, coming at midday. Um, Bank of England... I really am not going to spend much time in this briefing talking about because all in all they are going to hold policy steady. There's really no way that they can make any real change in policy at this point, not given the very close proximity of this at, uh, at this point in time at least. Uh, the looming deadline of uh, this Brexit uncertainty, will that deadline hold or will we get an extension to January uh, 2020 or tw uh, January 31st of 2020? So there's no press conference. This isn't a quarterly inflation report month. It's going to be a one and done. We're going to get the announcement, the likelihood here, unchanged, 9-0, unanimous. Uh, but we will get the line-by-line -line details of the minutes. And that's probably where there could potentially be some interesting things where they might talk about some of the external things, like the trade war, things like that. But obviously Brexit at the centre of any interest and how they classify those developments and to impacting the UK economy might have some influence on the on the pound one thing also um, that came out last night uh, i did say this before we talked about this about a week ago there is no smoke without fire and apparently um, arlene foster is softening once again 
about potentially being open to some kind of Northern Ireland specific Brexit solution. Uh, what has been talked about is that you know, perhaps then we could have uh, UK having its own ability uh, to be isolated, but Northern Ireland, given its geographic connection to the Republic, <coughs> would need to keep some kind of EU-related uh, regulatory alignment. That, of course, was absolutely contested by Arlene Foster originally, because that means Northern Ireland would be treated differently from the United Kingdom in the sense of Great Britain or England. In, uh, and so that would would mean that that's against what the you know a distinctly Protestant party would want uh, disruption and having a different uh, relationship from that of the rest of Britain, but needs must and political uh, relevance is on the on the on the table whether or not the DUP will have any type of say in anything going forward. And so, as I've said before, I think Arlene Foster now you could potentially see some movement because she will not want to have the fact that if we go into a general election, her party and their relevance is diminished by the fact that Boris, if he did come out with a majority, is no longer needed to have a working relationship with the DUP. So, yeah, as I think this is just continuation of that same mantra. Um, quick look then at the calendar for today. I mentioned retail sales. Then you've got the Bank of England for the US session. Weekly jobless claims, as per usual, on a Thursday. Philly Fed is coming out. Um, I guess if you were looking at the EM currencies, you've got the South African rate decision, uh, and let's expect a hold decision there. US existing home sales, 3 o'clock. Uh, and that's about it for the calendar ahead. Uh, just finally, from my side, um, this is the um, Amplify YouTube channel. I know for, uh, I'm only going to point this out to those who, who are not aware of this, but if you go on the actual homepage on our YouTube channel, if you scroll down, we have uh, these are all videos categorized so you can see the morning briefings here, the weekly strategies here, and then the live sessions here of which you can locate last night's live session hosted by me and Sam. If you click on that and if you click on then the show more in the description part of the video, you can see here the full kind of uh, chapters of everything that we discussed. Uh, so if I just zoom out for a second and you can jump to each one of these timestamps uh, to watch that session. So if you did miss it uh, and you're fairly f fairly new to navigating news-driven fundamental kind of market events, uh, if you jump to that second one, that's when I gave a full kind of 20-minute preview of how to tackle last night's event and it might be quite interesting for you to see uh, how we went about that. So I'll leave that with you. Okay, that's it from me. I hand you to Sam and I wish you a good day ahead. Thanks very much, guys. Yeah, hi guys, I <coughs> hope uh, we're doing well this morning. Uh, we'll have a, a quick look over the, uh, the general theme for, for the markets now and as well. We can obviously talk over some of those moves from yesterday. You can see uh, on gold that, that level that we were talking about seems like every day this week and, and rightly so. The importance of this area is not to be underestimated uh, for this week. If we can get a close below there, uh, could be by by. Uh, for, for now, but it's held so well, and, and why wouldn't it yesterday uh, on the f sort of first retest of, of uh, that low that we made from uh, the 13th, Friday the 13th, and a decent bounce to push higher, and uh, we then sort of found resistance on what is, else has been a, a pretty good level. You can still see, I'm going to put this onto a five minute from last night, and we were saying, so if we put it in, it would have been about, the chart would have looked like this, mm. like that basically and we were saying if uh, if we can get back above this key level of resistance that this market could be an opportunity to go long we said s p if it gets above that trend line could be an opportunity to get long and obviously you know at this point um you know this was you know very early into to the session what a resistance level it was and also the opportunity to then get in short retest low of the day and i know obviously charlie got in that and uh I'm sure he had a good evening. Uh, however, we have recovered uh, a touch since making that uh, that low, and just putting this back onto the 60-minute to the downside. It's all about that level. It's all about that level. How could we get there? Well, I'd start drawing, you know, these trend lines from the lows, but you can see it's it's already quite choppy. Um, you know, to 
to for a move to the downside. So I'd just be keeping a watch to see if anything presents itself and gives that opportunity that there could be a decent trend in play and then obviously waiting for maybe a break of that. We're literally trading right on 1500. To the upside, uh, obviously you've got those key points from, from yesterday. Previous lows of, of yesterday would be coming in around 1507. That's a, an important point before really getting back up to a retest of this trend line and just so happens that maybe by the time it would get reached is also that really key 15 12.7 level so gold a good mover and uh well nicely set up for today stocks uh you know a push lower to what was the low of the week failed breakout failed test to push lower we get that reversal just like euro low of the year pound low of the year wait to see where that that market closes um as well just uh following uh, a push lower. We are just starting to see a bit of a rewind. We'll come on to European stocks in a moment, but the, uh, certainly of the last hour, Euro stocks uh, and DAX have, have done a nice full reversal, and this is helping bring the um, bring the S and P back into play. And just when I was talking a couple of moments ago about uh, gold, we get above there, fine, let's go long. We were saying the same about that trend line in the S and P. Didn't get above. However, we did then around nine o'clock and you can see we were saying if you watch the video back or well i mean you guys would imagine as well the target would be the high of the yesterday that gap fill and you get it uh, and then obviously the next one up to what again you can see is marked up as a key level at 30 14 or, or just a bit below with the r1 uh, would have been a good trade so it's, it's you know with events like that you don't have to be in in, in the first uh first couple of minutes it's have your ideas, wait for those, and if they, if they come in, fine. You know, loss of opportunity, better than loss of capital, as I'm sure we've all heard before. This trend line now, all I would do is right-click, remove trend, and, and, and get on with the, the day, and even probably removing this rectangle from uh, the bottom. And obviously, it's now about 29.83. Uh, the pivot today has already been chopped through a, a fair bit. Probably would look to see, you know, if we can get any kind of trend on from there. It doesn't look too good. So, you know, this market here, I'd, I'd rather wait and see actually what happens because uh, we're pretty much, if we draw a line exactly where we're trading now, we are about three points away from exactly where we were at 6.59. Uh, so, that's classic central bank move. Uh, reverse within 24 hours um, but some important levels there as mentioned for the S&P uh, most notably to the downside and obviously that high that we made from yesterday uh, so I definitely have those marks up on the uh, on the chart as expected the pound didn't really do much that wasn't going to be the focus for yesterday even if you didn't have the Bank of England today uh, I would say it's still just going to be Brexit dominated however from the, uh, the downside from the last couple of sessions including today that is you can see we're just starting to, to respect a trend here from, well, all of yesterday. So around 125 today on the futures, I'd have that uh, just on a, on a note along with that low of the day, key level to, to have marked up on, on there. And, you know, the obviously the Bank of England could well dictate price and, and whatnot. But a technical push lower to there and obviously be looking at lows of yesterday and then those key levels from before. If we were to have an ultra dovish uh, Bank of England, remember we were talking about the that trend line break. I mean, that's getting far away now. Um, you know, the lot further we go, but still, you know, just have be have that you know on there just in case that looking to come in around that sort of low of of the week and uh, just below S2 uh, as well for, for the pound above the the higher the day, perhaps stretch its legs a bit to around. Uh, this kind of area as a whole around 125.35. We'll do a rundown obviously before uh, the Bank of England, but uh, yeah, some interesting levels uh, there to, to have on. Just bringing into picture the, the DAX, as, as I mentioned, it had uh, reversed that, that push lower. You know, again here, the failed push at, at pushing lower than yesterday's low. The advantage of waiting for that five minute close. You can see we get through it and then the re reaction above is, is pretty incredible actually. Uh, sharp retracement higher and the DAX is still elevated. You know, these lows, which I'll just highlight here, looks very much like gold in the way of that support. So, end of the week, can we get a close below? And, uh, you know, the failure then to make another high is, is quite key. 
So this is that real key now zone to keep an eye on the DAX. Below here, coming in around 12,300. Um, yeah, could get uh, could get ugly below there, should we say? But at the moment, it's it's not interested in, in doing so. Uh, as usual, any any questions, obviously do do let us know uh, on any of these markets. Let's have a quick look at at uh, oil to you know, start wrapping it up, and you can see oil not really interested in having a go at really completing that gap fill. I still think that's a trade to to keep an eye on. Obviously, volume you know into the afternoon may uh, provide a better opportunity. The original low from the Monday, which was obviously the high that we had back on the temp held well. We didn't really get a close below there until yesterday afternoon. The retest of that before the DOEs was solid and came lower. And you know, you're not going to be upset that you've just made uh, 110 ticks. Obviously, it doesn't look that much on the screen, but that's because of the, the moves we've had over the, the week so far. Uh, so that's a key level, 58.62. I do actually quite like the idea of seeing a, a push to the downside to try and attack some of these levels on the left-hand side. Obviously, time will, will tell uh, and really could be changed by one comment um, uh, as well. Also, worth having a look for, for those that do trade it. It literally just caught my eye now uh, from before. Bitcoin now below 10,000 uh, again there, breaking uh, some key support. Uh, big spike and you can see just you know if we talk percentages of this move where is it currency I mean this is at 4 a.m. and you're getting a five percent move yeah I'll take uh, I'll take a few points on the S&P over that <laughs> at the moment uh, as usual any questions do let us know European stocks are rebounding nicely that's dragging US equities higher Bank of England the, the main one to focus on uh, around midday gold just have a look at this uh, trend line to see if we can start getting anything respected 1492 for the day and the week is vital as usual any questions please uh, do let us know but i hope you'll have uh, a great trading day